And we certainly need in Europe, and this has been said already by the other speakers as well, we need more entrepreneurial, we need more you know, creative people in Europe. And higher education is very important, and I would even go as far as was said before, you know, we, we perhaps have to rethink the whole learning in higher education institutes, and we certainly, as EIT, try to help there as well. A relentless focus, ladies and gentlemen, on impact and leadership is also very important, because I see too often that we simply, you know, forget about the goals, uh, timely deliverable is no longer an issue and so forth, and that really should change. And then finally, I may offend some of my, you know, old R&D colleagues now a little bit because, you know, I happen to be, have been uh, in, in, in research myself. I do believe that the, the whole uh, issue of entrepreneurship is, is so key that sometimes, and in some domains even oftentimes, it's more important than the R&D to become successful and achieve the impact in terms of products, services, new businesses, and at the end of the day, what we want in Europe, new jobs. Having said that, innovation can start anywhere. So obviously, you should look at the whole innovation chain, and the European ecosystem clearly has to look at both education research, if you like R&D, and, of course, business, both big business and small business. Now, that means breaking down barriers in Europe between these various uh, important institutions. And again, there I, I do believe that the entrepreneurship is so very important, that the open innovation aspect is so very important, because these should be the prevailing notions in bringing these parties now together and boost innovation. Now, what does that mean uh, on a political level in Europe? And here, of course, I am now dancing on kind of uh, uh, thin ice, maybe, but I like to say a few words about it. Certainly, we need to invest more, and you will continue to discuss that, so why should I address it, right? Uh, there is a bit more, though, because uh, I, I, I would like to say here aloud that Europe should start to realize now that consensus, thinking, and innovation are simply at odds with each other. It's not going to work this way. And so here is a, an enormous issue. Um, it's very funny. I've spent quite a bit of time in the new economies in the past couple of years, and they often perceive our consensus seeking, also on a European policy level, as kind of navel-gazing, if I might say so, right? And they certainly will not wait for us. In fact, they, you know, kind of in the background applaud this attitude because it gives them more time. So consensus seeking about what is important and why we should do stuff should really be replaced by a policy of can-do stipulating empowerment in people and enabling the people to take control of the business issues and move these business issues forward, both in small industry, in large industry, both in education, both in research. So be much more pragmatic than we have been in the past. Take more controlled risk, because I, I probably cannot avoid the word control a little bit here in this uh, uh, circle. Right? The, the other thing that I wanted to mention here is we Europeans, inclusive myself, we have become very good in setting up objectives and targets that were never met. We are very good in that. We are absolutely world class on that one. But I, I have to add uh, to you, you know, a, a slightly different perspective. I do believe that we should now go as Europe, and I mean this very sincerely, beyond policy coordination. And you should, in fact, go to real deliverable de delivery of impactful initiatives. And this is a completely different world. So EIT, the European Institute of Innovation and Technology, is one experiment with such an impactful initiative. The knowledge and innovation communities now will have to deliver based on co-location centers where the complete innovation chain, education, research, and you know, business will all come together. And by the way, all of this will also help you know, to boost mobility between co-location centers in Europe it will help to contribute to a healthier brain motion in Europe. 
And these are all the aspects that we also see, of course, in the Barroso Plan 2020, which is very, very key. So in summary, let me just summarize what it is. Open innovation, for me, it's already a given. It's very important, networked innovation. Uh, these gentlemen have talked about it. I'm sure you will talk a bit about it a bit more. Next to that, development of excellent people, more entrepreneurial skin, skills, inventing, perhaps reinventing to some extent higher education. I sometimes miss in Europe, excuse me the expression, leadership, and a relentless focus on the delivery of impact on time. Impact on time. If I take one example, again, the European policies now, the 2020, it should not slip a single day. And, and, and this is an attitude, I think, that should become more prevailing in Europe. Accept and build on entrepreneurship. Ladies and gentlemen, entrepreneurship sometimes really has become more important than the R&D. And, and this is very well known in the United States. It is very well known in China and India and in Brazil. So let's face the reality and face the music. And finally, for politics, you know, go beyond coordination activities. Do more than that and try to decide on real delivery of impact. Thank you very much. <laughs>